Hello everyone! Today I'm going to take a look at the Alaska, an upcoming tier 9 premium US cruiser. Now this ship is a work in progress so anything you see here is subject to change, keep that in mind and those are just my first impressions of the ship. Now the ship has 12.4 kilometers concealment and I found myself a Fletcher. Now this ship also comes with radar, the radar is 9.45 kilometers and it has a duration of 35 seconds. So now I'm going to radar myself a Fletcher, but I'm also trying to get behind this island in some cover. I really don't want to charge into the Fletcher's torpedoes, and I also don't want to be shot at by the battleships here in the back, so I'm hoping this island will also provide some cover against those. And also I'm no longer spotted, which is a bonus. Unfortunately I can't shoot the Fletcher any longer, and it looks like he will escape here. Fine. Now the map I'm currently on is Islands of Ice, it's a standard battle and it's tier 9, so that's pretty amazing I suppose. But let's talk a little bit more about this ship. The Alaska does have 305mm guns with quite a long reload as you've already seen and I'm using the reload module. With the reload module it's 17.6 seconds or s well, there's something around that I suppose, 17 point something I think. Now, the Alaska has the better penetration angles for armor-piercing shells, which is quite nice. And maybe I should have aimed a little bit lower at the buffalo, but I got penetrations, and that's always quite nice. You can also see here the firing angles are not very good. I have to give a lot of broadside, which could be rather disastrous with a Musashi over there, but currently nobody's aiming it, so I should be fine. This ship also isn't the most maneuverable when it comes to rudder shift and turning circle, which is understandable, the Alaska is quite a big ship. Now, armor-wise, the Alaska, is, well, the deck is reasonably protected. I think it's 32 millimeters, but you have a lot of superstructure. And the bow and the stern, they are vulnerable with 27 millimeters of armor. So most battleships can just overmatch your bow. And while your citadel is very low under the water, if they overmatch your bow, the shell might just travel further into your ship and hit your citadel. So keep that in mind, you are by no means invulnerable to citadels. Now you have a pretty decent hit point pool, so you can take a few hits or you're into trouble. Now with 12.4 uh, concealment, it's rather hard to get that much use out of the radar in my experience. You just can't really sneak up on them. They have a very huge ship, so it's harder to hide behind an island. You don't have the usual US shell arcs that arc up to the moon and allow you to lob the shells or all sorts of islands. And if you can't get that close, then it's harder to use your radar. Instead of the radar, you could also bring the spotting plane or the fighter plane. Personally, I'd still choose the radar, even though it's harder to get some use out of it. Radar is just such a powerful tool that I wouldn't go without it. Now you can either pick hydroacoustic search or defensive fire. Since you're a rather large ship, defensive fire might be very good to defend yourself against carriers. And yes, I'm aware that there are battleships here towards my broadside, and considering that now ships are aiming at me, I really should angle more against those, but I'm already undetected again. So unless they already have salvos in the air, I'm fine. Now, anti-air-wise, this ship has decent anti-air, as you'd expect of a US ship. Well, decent anti-air with defensive fire. So I found a nice position where I'm not getting spotted and I can shoot this Musashi. I've already won fire burning, now I got the second one. And now he's used his damage con. Now let's see if I can get another one before he gets away. Now the high explosive performance on this ship has been treating me rather well. You have I think a 27% fire chance, but you don't have such a high rate of fire. So I mean, there is still quite a bit of RNG involved and I'm getting good RNG this round regarding my fires. But overall, High Explosive has been treating me rather nicely. 
And the armor piercing can be pretty powerful. If you're shooting broadside battleships, like if I'd be shooting this Musashi with armor piercing, you'd want to aim for the upper belt. And I should probably be trying armor piercing here, but it's just... The high explosive has been treating me rather well so far. And there you go, another fire. Now this is not... <laughs> you probably shouldn't expect that many fires. But in my game so far, I've started a reasonable amount of fires. Let's just go with that. Well, what else is there to say about this ship? Top speed is, I think, 33 knots, so that's okay. Torpedo protection is pretty bad, so you really don't want to get hit by torpedoes. And it just means it's... It's a ship that will probably perform better if you're trying to play it, uh, play it from further away. And yeah, the amount of fires I started this battle was just... Well, let's just say a well, lot. Now I'm going finally for some armor piercing to try it out against this buffalo some more. I mean, I had some nice penetrations against the buffalo early on. And I mean, this battle we're just absolutely wrecking the enemy team. There is not much to say about that, I suppose. So I can now just charge into the remaining ships and see how my ship performs, because it doesn't really matter anyway. And maybe we can find something where we get a few citadels out of it. I'm back to high explosive here, because I thought that buffalo wouldn't show me much broadside. Now overall, I think it's a decent ship. I mean, it's... I guess it's reasonably well armored for a cruiser. If you angle a bit, you with the high amount of hit points, you aren't going down that fast. You have 19 kilometer range, so you can stay a bit in the back and just focus on dealing some damage to enemy ships. The accuracy of the guns is not as accurate as regular cruisers, but that's, I guess expected with 305 millimeter guns but again it has been treating me reasonably well so far now maybe this atlanta can demonstrate what the armor piercing can do i mean atlanta is very well protected and there you go nice citadel coming up now that musashi is a bit of a problem the bismarck less so your bow is Armored well enough that a Bismarck can't overmatch it. So if I go bow in against a Bismarck, that Bismarck will be in some trouble. But the Musashi not so much. But first I'm still trying to sink this Atlanta. Um, yeah, I mean... It's certainly a decent ship, but there are some things that you've got to be aware of, like the limited turret angles make it hard to kite away, especially with two turrets at your front. Going bow in against the Bismarck works marvelously, but there are a lot of ships that might just overmatch your stern. And it's not the most maneuverable ship, you really don't want to get hit by torpedoes. And it can be a bit hard to get into a useful radar position because you're such a large ship. But yeah, the hit points add a nice bit of tankiness and the 305mm guns feel quite nice. So I guess those are my first impressions. Let's see what Wargaming does with this ship. I think it's decent the way it is. It has some weaknesses, it has some strengths and it can be quite a bit of fun to play. We've destroyed an enemy battleship. Here we are with the results and some closing thoughts. Now the Alaska is by no means a battleship, but she seems reasonably tanky for a cruiser, mostly because of her high hit point pool. The guns, well, for me the high explosive has been performing pretty well, and the armor piercing, if you know where to aim, is pretty good as well, I suppose. You have higher caliber guns, so you are not the biggest TPM monster, but I like that sort of thing. The radar can be quite hard to use because with your concealment and this range it's not the best combination, you aren't sneaking up on anyone in this ship. And your high reload means that you can't get too many salvos off against the destroyer, so if you miss one salvo it's 
can be pretty bad, but if you hit, it can be pretty devastating, I suppose. The firing angles are certainly something getting used to and can be annoying at times, but it comes with a nice, nice long range of 19 kilometers where you can just sit a little bit further behind and farm some damage if you so choose. So, yeah, let's see what Wargaming does with it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time.